Hello everyone, this is Päivi Erola, an artist from Finland and I want to invite you to my studio this morning and show you some of the projects I've been working on and at the same time I talk about how to feel more focused and more playful. This is the way I have solved the problem when I think that uh, I have to do work that is really unified and that's, that has the similar feel and a look all over. And at the same time, I want to play and I want to be creative and I don't want to end up just repeating myself. So I will show you some of the things I don't usually show and I will also show some some footage uh, when I'm working here in, in the studio. So welcome! So here's a notebook that I'm currently using when I want to record ideas for my art and for my online classes, for my art business, um, all kinds of creative ideas. And uh, I also have a more formal notebook that is more like, bullet, like a bullet journal. But I've actually noticed that this kind of uh, not so fancy, not so organized notebook works really well when I want to uh, invent new ideas and when I want to really play with many ideas. Uh, this kind of old notebook can be really uninspiring because, for example, my notebook had all kinds of uh, uh, rough sketches that I actually didn't like anymore, that actually weren't inspiring at all. So what I did uh, was that I started looking at these really uninspiring sketches that I had um, in a new way. I started thinking about this notebook as a layered notebook in a way that when the time goes by, uh, every day and every note is a one layer and I can add new layers and that way get connected with the, with the old ideas or even better, make the old ideas look much more beautiful and, and ins inspirational. So what I've been doing is that I've been taking uh, any page, any page here, like for example this one is the old page where I've just scribbled something, it had some purpose back then but it doesn't have anything at the moment and don't find this, I don't find this particularly inspiring. But, it, but then I just start writing notes when I have something that I want to document and write and uh, and I don't care what is it what it is in here. And then when I have a small break in my in my thoughts, then I take colored pencils and I start coloring all kinds of uh, little details that I can find. And and then I also take a drawing pen and start adjusting uh, the, the the old drawing and. Uh, the idea is that this page doesn't have to get finished in that session either. For example, I have I now have this spread that where I have been uh, coloring some old sketches and then I've been writing some notes and these are just notes from this and that. They, they don't they are not in a, any particular order and. Uh, uh, then I've just started coloring some of the details and uh, adding some some elements there. But uh, I don't. It doesn't have to be finished yet. I can finish it uh, another time. I'll show you a spread that is finished. <laughs> so so this has been constructed 
in many sessions and during many years. So I've, I've added some notes, I've added some coloring, new details, new drawings, new doodles, anything. And here's another one. Uh, lots of uh, writing, then some coloring and and uh, all kinds of uh, scribbles and uh, all kinds of uh, notes. And I often take, if I write in another session, I often take uh, a different color uh, pen just to show that there's a different uh, time period when I've created those. No logic at all, but I've tried just tried to connect with the old uh, ideas and make uh, invent new things out of that. And, and for some reason this brings me so much joy. It makes me feel that whatever I create uh, is meaningful, even if it doesn't isn't at that moment it will be meaningful uh, in the next moment. For example, now I can take an empty space somewhere here um, and uh, just uh, scribble something with the drawing pen, just loosely scribble and, and uh, uh, don't worry about anything, how finished it would be, how it would look, what it would represent and uh, just out of the joy of handling a pen and making the line wander there on, on paper. I might leave it like that. So it's just some scribbles on paper and then another day I have something I need to write and I have some ideas that I want to document and I use the empty space to write them down and then I add some color or I might add some color, color right now but just just a little to to make it a bit more inspiring when I start uh, making more notes or drawing drawing something. So there's a lot of uh, unfinished pages and then uh, in the middle of them there's one and I've actually even written that what, what, what on earth is the purpose of this drawing and then figured out that maybe this is this is uh, this expresses that or that or that. Uh, getting new ideas and uh, trying to make the old skip scribbles make some sense with the thoughts that I uh, currently have. Uh, so uh, I, I haven't published any of these in my blog for example or, or Instagram or Facebook or shared any of these because uh, this, is, this is my playing ground and it's, uh, it's more like a notebook than an art journal or anything. It's, it's about my creative ideas and how I can connect uh, uh, with them even if there has been some time that has passed. And uh, if, I, if I find something like I found an old uh, stranded uh, knitting design that I had I had uh, designed, I just glued it there because it's kind of mix and match book and uh, very a very important part of my creative process at the moment. This is a Moleskin notebook but it's not the thick paged book that I've used for art journals, the, it's called Art Plus sketchbook but this one is just regular notebook so the the pages are really thin and they actually you, you can actually see that there's, there's some writing that sh see, shows through if you if you use like like I like these kinds of drawing pens this is outline drawing system pen and I love it and uh, even if it shows uh, through through the other page I don't mind. 
I don't mind at all. I think it makes this journal or oh, notebook even better. Even better that it's not so clinical and uh, it's actually just a big mess. And I find it so inspiring to browse these old pages that have been finished and how my ideas flow and how there's no a sense of linear time and I think that's something that we often forget that that uh, creativity doesn't have to be so time dependent something that you have done many years ago can be really inspiring now or if it's not you can make it inspiring and use your creativity that way I think that the idea for this came from my childhood. When I was a child we used to draw, uh, me and my big sister used to draw together on Saturdays and we uh, had this kind of game or play that uh, we first made the line drawing and then I colored hers and she colored mine. Our age difference was about 16 or 17 years so I was uh, about five years old or something and, and couldn't draw that well as, as my big sister and I admired her drawing skills and I found it so enjoyable to color those beautiful women that she was creating and then I was honored and excited that she took my scribbles and my <laughs> clumsy lines and uh, she made the best out of them so so in the end we had these two pieces of drawing and uh, the beautifully colored uh, clumsy drawing and then uh, really <laughs> really um, carelessly colored beautiful <laughs> beautiful drawing and there's some kind of similar magic here that when I take these uh, old sketches and uh, then start to color them and then start to think about them and add some details for them that I feel the sense of satisfaction that I can make my ugly stuff really inspiring and then I also and it's often like that that when you look something closely uh, like now I'm looking at this there's a bird and I could add some feathers there uh, and I, I quite like the position the bird is is uh, is there and I could I could highlight it by adding some legs there too and and it's it's actually quite playful and fun and and uh, the bird that seemed to be upside down uh, I've added some legs and made it more playful and and uh, it it makes me feel really good that I can work with my old ideas and uh, get some new ones from there so if you have an old notebook or an old art journal that you absolutely hate uh, try this try make everything a little bit more inspiring try adding notes written text that the about the ideas that you've got recently or just keep a diary about uh, your thoughts and uh, what i do is i often add um, a date near uh, near the near the note so I often add a date and there can be a lot of different dates in the same spread and I enjoy that seeing those those dates from different times and also um, uh, numbered the page every time I've finished it so I know that it's a finished page when I've numbered when I've numbered it so uh, that's a kind of loose organization that I've been practicing here but I absolutely love this and it's uh, if I go to art museums or if I get some really quick ideas that I write down I just add a date and 
a quick note. Or if I have uh, a couple of minutes uh, time to spend, I can, I can take any page and just add a bit of color and leave it like that. So uh, that's a really quick process. So if I think about my drawings and paintings uh, as a hierarchy, so that they form a hierarchy, uh, this is the lowest level in that hierarchy. And the next level are my sketchbooks and art journals, where I document ideas that, are, that I spend more time with. So um, I used to use really small art journals and this is Moleskine watercolor journal. It's great because it has watercolor, watercolor paper but it's currently too small to me. I want to spend a little more time and have a little bit more space. Here's also a Moleskine. Uh, this is the Art Plus sketchbook which has really a nice sturdy paper and uh, uh, so this has been uh, well I've, I've also um, made some 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 more vis visual ideas but uh, this is again this is too small to me I think when you when you start you go for a small size but then there comes a point when these small pages can feel too limited and and then you want to move on to bigger size and um, I've used a lot of these uh, dilutions creative journals this is my second one I have filled the first one and the second one is uh, is uh, doesn't have so many blank pages anymore and here I've uh, made a big, some bigger work uh, but actually this has uh, felt uh, too small too. I always feel that I need the whole spread and uh, one page seems to be so small and then the downside is that uh, if somebody asks and wants to buy, buy my sketch, I can't sell them. So I've, uh, I've picked uh, another sketchbook. This is the Pink Pig uh, sketchbook and uh, it's uh, manufactured in the UK and it, does, it has quite thick paper. It's not watercolor paper, but you can uh, quite easily use it with watercolors. And um, uh, here's, here's a project that I'm working on at the moment. So when I create pages for this sketchbook, they usually take like um, two or three hours and sometimes they take uh, up to t 10 hours to make. So there's uh, more sketchy stuff and uh, then uh, some work that is um, it's more finished and has, has taken uh, more time, like this Marie Antoinette piece. If I would only make these scribbles and then move on to paintings, uh, I feel that these ideas that I've scribbled are just too raw, that they need more time to work on. And, uh, and uh, to me, the solution has been that I have some kind of middle level there, that I create pieces that are like sketches, but um, that are finished to some point. And... Uh, uh, there can be some that are less finished and some that are, are more refined. For example, this one is quite finished and could easily be framed too. And uh, then I have uh, I have some that are just just more like small sketches and also this kind of 
collections where I've also added some text. So these are like uh, idea pages that have, have uh, uh, required a little bit more time from me and uh, uh, I can see if the ideas are visually good and I can also use this for practicing. I also have an art community called Bloom and Fly and I use a lot of this sketchbook when I want to show ideas around the monthly theme that we have. So uh, I will show process, process photos, some videos and talk about the work that I've uh, I've created here, like this one, Walking the Dog. If you only produce this level of work, that takes few hours and uh, uh, where you connect with your ideas and then if you get the feeling that you are not focused enough then uh, probably it is that you miss one level the the project that takes take long time that make you feel more focused make you feel more purposeful and that also make a big difference when you want to show uh, your how would I say production or uh, it's a it's a pretty cold world word but but when you want to show your pieces and uh, collect a portfolio of your pieces or especially if you want to sell your work then it's it's really I think it's it makes a big big difference when you uh, create projects that they take a longer time. So when I begin an oil painting session, I have all my oil painting supplies here and I have this uh, wooden box that my husband has made where I store all these treasures. It's a very different session than when I'm making those sketchbooks or notebooks. It's uh, the, the atmosphere when I start painting is, is different. I try to feel not so creative, but focus on thinking and focus on painting carefully. And I actually love that feeling that it it really gives me the sense of focus and it really gives me the big purpose for my work. I think that uh, the, the purpose for, for my art is twofold. On the other hand, I love to share ideas, I love to share my process, I love to talk about this kind of stuff and I also love to teach and I I want to become the best person ever to give feedback for art and I, I think about that constantly. I have every Tuesday I have a feedback day in my community where uh, the members can post their work and uh, I will give feedback for them and I, I try to give new ideas, I try to suggest uh, some adjustments if, if needed but what I especially want to do is that uh, when I get to know uh, the members I think it's, it's most beneficial that way that we can uh, maintain a conversation about what to create, how to create, uh, what is the purpose of each, each one and uh, I find that extremely important part of my artistry and I also love to run online classes and I love to see what people have created from uh, the how would I say, not from my ideas, but, but uh, from the general uh, ideas that I give and uh, from the technique instructions that I, I share. But then this other part is that when I'm painting uh, the bigger paintings and bigger projects, 
I like to be very quality focused and uh, uh, I try to do things as carefully and as thoughtfully I possibly can. I actually enjoy this tremendously but it's more like stepping into a church after being in the amusement park. The painting that I'm working on, one of the one of the three paintings that I'm working on is this one and uh, I'm, I'm uh, painting a series about uh, strong emotions and uh, the working title for the series is Aspirations and uh, I, I find it really inspiring to t think how we, we people love to uh, set goals and how there's a sense of uh, ambition and, uh, and also how we want to achieve things and, and how we dream about uh, achieving things and dream about changing the world and this is one of the paintings of the series and, and I use old masters painting techniques even if I paint, often paint quite intuitively I use thin layers, I let each thin layer dry and I often use pigments as they are uh, so that when the layers, when there are many layers, the translucent layers uh, build the color and when using this technique, if you use other colors than just yellows and whites uh, the painting becomes darker and darker and so, so I need to add some more brighter colors there to brighten this color scheme a bit. I have another painting that is in the same phase in that, in that respect. This is a bit further in, in details and such. So this is a bit, still a bit dark but uh, there are quite a lot of details. Uh, in uh, place already. But now I'm using um, a quite quite big brush to to add a little bit more white there and and often when I paint these I don't even paint a full layer. I paint some areas and uh, uh, then let them try, dry. Uh, I know it's not very efficient but it gives me thinking time and it also allows me to to build depth one uh, step at a time. I also need to use this uh, painting liquid and this time I don't mix any colors, I just added some white and, and some uh, painting, li painting liquid there on a palette. Because I use a lot of my finger, I often use glove for painting. And I quite like how it also sets the mood. So I want to make some parts of this a bit lighter. So I add, add the color carefully and uh, paint all these details. For some people, black is a really difficult color that they always uh, that they always forget that it exists, and and then they have problems with color values that when they only use really really bright colors. And for me, it's often the other way around that that I find using using painting with white really difficult because I think it's so empty color. I've been painting this for quite some time. 
and the ideas around this have have grown quite a lot. I also know the color scheme already that it will be this pansy will be a bit purple and uh, then the face will have some purples and pinks too. This has a working title called Dreaming Ducks and it's about ducks that dream uh, living, living in a place that looks like ducks. Uh, so I'm going to use um, a quite limited color palette here. I'm, I'm still changing the colors a bit but uh, there's still a lot of work with this one. But it's getting there. If you've been following me painting this, uh, there's, there's a lot that has happened happened lately. Lots of details that have been added there and lots of little adjustments that, that make the painting. A couple of weeks ago I opened an online store for my art uh, so that I sent the paintings here from Finland and uh, it was a big step for me because um, previously I've sold uh, to sold locally and also I've sold through Saatchi Art, the gallery, online gallery. I felt that uh, I really needed to have my own online store because uh, I think that uh, many people like to buy uh, directly from the artist and the feedback I've got so far has been uh, just that, that uh, it's, it feels better to buy directly from me and uh, not through uh, somebody else and of course it's uh, also uh, more enjoyable to me to pack those paintings and uh, I also have some prints and uh, and I know who buys them and, uh, and I'm more connected with that. Here's one of my acrylic paintings that doesn't have the glossy finish that I currently add to my paintings. And I, I actually think that if this uh, would be finished with a varnish, it would be should be matte because uh, the theme and and all that is not so historical it's it's m a bit more modern but then when I have uh, paintings like this which have more historical feel I feel that the glossy finish I've used uh, this is acrylic painting too and I've used polymer gloss on it and I think the I don't know if I get the now now I think I get the glossy but it makes the color so deep it was like it brightened the whole painting my favorite detail is this fabric thing there And then, of course, uh, frame finishes the paintings. I always try to keep some frame pieces in my store too, uh, because I don't actually know which would be better, to frame the pieces or not. And sometimes some people want to frame them in a way that fits their home and uh, uh, but I think that for some it's really nice to buy a painting that is framed especially if the framing feels challenging or such. I show one of my framed work currently in the store 
and this has been actually created uh, on a canvas paper and that's why it's been framed with a glass. The frame is beautiful, I think it's uh, silvery and because this painting also has silver and gold metallic paints, it's very glossy and I think that the glossy frame looks lovely and if it's uh, if the wall is is quite pale it's good to have some dark there to frame frame the painting this is called free spirit and uh, the idea for this piece is freedom and how we can experience spiritual freedom uh, no matter what our physical circumstances are and I've used a bouquet of flowers to communicate that but haven't used any reference photos just painted freely now if you look at all this you see the finished paintings and the oil paintings and such and uh, and uh, if you think that oh my god I'm just doing these scribbles or such uh, we all need to do it. We all need to appreciate these, uh, these notebooks and we all need to do some sketches too. I don't think it's good for any artist, no matter if you sell your work, no matter if you create for your own pleasure only or are something between. I don't think it's good to just focus on uh, increasing the technical quality or just uh, painting big things. I think it's really important to also appreciate all the scribbles and see them as a part of the process of, of your creative process. My dream is actually to uh, paint few paintings during my lifetime that will last longer than the next 50 years that people would like to keep them and pass them on. I think that's because uh, I don't have any children and uh, I'm, my life is built around art that it's somehow I, I feel that it's my legacy and it keeps me raise the bar every time I start the painting to to really really focus on that goal and that gives me the focus and uh, when I'm playing with my notebooks or, or sketchbooks um, it's all for the same goal so I hope this gave you some ideas and uh, also give you, you a perspective to, in your journey in art. And if you need more guidance, I have the art community called Bloom and Fly. Uh, and now it's a really good time to join because we uh, are starting uh, the spring season. And also if you want to buy my, buy my art, I have the store at paivierla.com and all my online classes are at www.pionianparakit.com so let's see you there <laughs>